welcome back we will now see few interesting scenarios here to automate firstly let me show whatever you enter here it's automatically getting entered in this edit box that way say that we say as two way data binding in angular okay now we'll remove this and enter hello so automatically you will see hello in this edit box as well so now our goal is to enter something in this edit box and at the same time we have to verify the value what we entered here is displaying in this edit box or not by default so that we need to validate validation number one number two so there is a test scenario that name edit box should be at least two characters in length minimum characters what you can enter is two so in generally people will enter one and validate error message that is pretty straightforward scenario but if you inspect this edit box there is a property set for us min length equals to two so this property is actually driving us to stop entering less than two so instead of entering one character and seeing error message let's put validation at this point we have to validate if min length property for this edit box is two or not that's validation number two and validation number three we need to verify if this entrepreneur is in disabled mode or not okay right now these both are enabled but this is disabled but we have to confirm so we need to put assertion to confirm it is disabled and we need to put assertion for this property level and at the same time we need to validate if the value matching in the name edit box and two way edit box okay let's do that now okay right now we were looking at data driving testing with fixtures is done i will talk more about this later again but you have understood basic functionality of working with fixtures and we also seen importance of setting up test hooks and we actually use this test hook for our fixture concept isn't it so maybe in the next lecture we will start with building custom cypress command topic but before that let's progress in our test case so this section is all about combination of building test case and also discussing framework concepts okay let's travel in parallel tracks of automating and then implementing best practices of framework so this particular lecture let's try to implement some test automation using cypress okay now you already entered bob in your input field right so now let's see if that bob is present in the two way data binding example okay technically it should present that's how this application is designed if you enter bob it should be bob here as well so let's take the locator of this um you can use cypress locator or crow path we already saw that nth child of one is your edit box but anyhow you can use what cypress gave you as well sorry so dot should have dot value and that value should be nothing but this data dot name isn't it so basically we were checking if the value attribute for that edit box is bob or not so this also coming from jquery jquery have ability to get the text present on that specific element with a value attribute so that's why we were actually using that value and then comparing this is one way another way is to solve this promise and use dot text method we have seen that as well right in one of our lecture let me show you that yeah this is one way get that element and solve the promise dot text and then you can throw it into one variable and compare and put assertion so instead of doing all this if you want to 
just ruin one step there is a value attribute which jquery give us you can simply say should have dot value and the value whatever you are expecting you should place that in the second argument so whatever i type here should reflect here so that's why i am just using the same name to confirm that both are matching nice and next one is to verify if the property min length is true or not how do you do that basically all these are attributes right class min length name required type and style so again a same object because i am going to work on that edit box only this time checking the min length property so there is one more assertion should have dot min length will this work no this will not work because jquery is not giving any min length property then how to handle it so any attribute whatever you have if you want to validate if that attribute is correct or not in jquery we have attr which stands for attribute so which attribute you want to validate min length and what is the value of that attribute to that's it you have to place like this so no matter if you want to look for mini length or any attribute you just need to first say that i am validating attribute and that that attribute name and the value of that attribute okay so that's the difference try to understand but if you don't want to do in this way there is another way that you can resolve this promise and use a method called dot proc and then in that method you can pass this min length as argument to extract the value to which we already seen in our previous lecture look at this i got a element and then i resolve promise and i applied prop method and i got this is one way but if you just want to do in one single line with an assertion here we were not retrieving anything we were directly comparing with and leaving it out but here our job is to retrieve and pass that url into another step of our cypress so that's the reason i did in this way if your goal is to only validate if attribute is having one specific value then you can directly use this way similarly grabbing text also if you want to work on that text for your further a uh, validation then you can res resolve promise and get text method but if your goal is to only to validate if text is that particular element you can use this okay now let them be any attribute tomorrow if someone ask you to validate required type attribute you need to simply paste that attribute here and the value text here that's it so do remember this nice two validations is done and the third validation what we have is to validate if it is disabled or not okay um sorry it's disabled and this is the step so we already have id for that so it's very easy to work on it how to check whether it's disabled or not if you remember i clearly told that if you want to check the property whether if it is checked or where is that let me show you in check boxes i have explained you yeah should be visible should be checked similarly should be disabled okay if you are working on behavior visible or not checking is the behavior right is that checked or not is the behavior similarly is that disabled or not is the behavior for all the behavior you should use b dot if you are retrieving property then should have value that's what we see now okay do remember the difference between b and have just question yourself that is that a behavior or a property but if you just say should be dot you will get all the options you can look into here and understand if my desired element is present here or not 
okay so v dot disabled so we were simply checking if that radio button is in disabled mode or not nice so we have implemented all the three validations whatever we thought and this is best example for you to understand because you will come across scenarios to check whether something is disabled or the attribute value and at the same time verifying the text everything is done in single step all right so save this test and fingers crossed if this goes right or if this throws any error perfect there is no error and everything got passed you can see that it's bob here and the assertion what we put is passed at the same time we were validating if the minimum length value is 2 and it got also passed and the radio button is disabled you can see that there is one test ran and everything got passed so this is how you can handle these validations all right we'll we'll see you with one more topic in next lecture thank you